Yeah, sounds good. All right, guys, we popped it back on. The Internet's acting up. I tried to switch uh, networks, so hopefully it's back online, guys. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, are we back on, guys? Let me know. G-Men49 is in the house. What is going on, G-Men? Just let me know if we are back online. Okay, we're back. We're back. Okay, they say we're back. We're so, back? Okay. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay, so let's talk, Matt. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was trying to switch 5G because JC was breaking up. What is going on, Maddox? Um, Cano may be one drug test. That's another big deal, the Cano drug test situation that Tam Hill brings up. If he, if he fails one more drug test, he misses a full season. Yeah, you know, but he's coming off a year where he just got suspended for 80 games. So I don't think Cano, you know, a seasoned veteran in this league is going to do that again and, and really just ruin his career. I you was going to say your favorite Met did it while he was on suspension. <laughs> I know. A lot of my guys, you know, Reyes got in trouble with it. Mejia got in trouble with it. Cologne early in his career, got well, late in his career, actually got in trouble with it. Um, but, you know, a lot of guys get popped for, for this stuff now, you know, in, in today's game. But uh, bottom line is, what are the Mets getting? They're getting a top-of-the-end closer. Well, and I don't want to say they're they're getting because the deal's not done yet. It's not official like we were talking about earlier. Right. But, um, you know, what are we getting? We're getting a top closer that we're not going to have to pay anything to, Edwin Diaz. He's young. He's under control for the next four seasons. I like that. Number two, we're getting Robinson Cano. He's going to come in and be a top three hitter on the team. He's going to provide veteran leadership. He's going to be playing second or first base, you know, which I personally think are going to be uh, positions of need. And we're also clearing money for getting rid of uh, Swarzak and Jay Bruce. So we're going to be dealing some prospects, you know, Kalinic, Justin Dunn, and Batista. But Batista's not even a top third, you know, a, a top thirty ranked prospect. So it's a pretty steep price to pay, but. I got to say this, you know, as a, you know, as a Met fan, as a long suffering Met fan, I don't want to say I'm that long because I've only been, you know, into baseball since like 2009, 2010. But so, so I'm not, I haven't been suffering as long as you, Chris, but, um, (laughs) but, you know, I got to say, you know, the, this is not like a Met move. The Mets, you know, looking at last season, we would have just stood pat. We would have said, no, we're going to pass and we're just going to ride the same team out there next season. And that's what it's going to be. We're going to be fine with shooting for 80, 81 and 81. You know, right. but this move, this is a power move. Brand new GM, Brody Van Wagen is coming in, making a power statement and trying to get, a, you know, a couple of very nice pieces. Yeah, I mean, and you bring up that that's one thing that has to, that people need to know. And I think most of the people probably know the guys they're giving up, Bruce. And um and uh and uh, what uh, Swarzak, that's a lot of money coming off the cap, off the uh, salary cap, because they're saving what is it forty million dollars between those two players? Yeah, I would say so because Bruce, I know you know we'd have we I think he's under contract for two more seasons, at, and then thir- Swarzak, thirteen per for Bruce, and I think Swarzak's eight per. Yeah, so we so we are clearing money, you know, and yeah. it's not like the, yeah, and the Mariners will be also contributing on trying to pay off some of Cano's contracts. So it's not like we're going to be paying off the full 120 mil. Yeah, so you figure I it looks like from the most recent reports if this trade goes as is, they're going to be paying 85 about of the 120, but they're saving 40 from getting rid of Swarzak and Bruce. So you're only taking in 45 million really over the next 5 years. That's for two you know, top of the end, top top players on this team. You well, know I mean? well, it's, well. When you think about it like that, it's more, it's more than that because you're going to be play, paying the closer probably five or six next year, ten or twelve the year. But either way, you're getting a closer at an affordable rate, and you're not paying the full amount of Cano's contract, and you're getting rid of two bad contracts on your team. So there is a lot of good things to this trade. Uh, the thing I don't, the thing that hey, I I'm most against that I don't like is the prospect they're giving up. The center fielder, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Kalenic. Kalenic. He's, I mean, supposedly this guy's got, I mean, and, and I know a lot of people say he could be like Brandon Nimmo, who's a good player, not great. But this guy was the sixth overall pick. He's got a world of ability, but his, his ETA is probably around 2022. 20, so we don't know yet. But if he turns out to be a superstar, you get killed in this trade. Yeah, but I think you just you answered your own question with the statement you just made. He supposedly is really good, and he could be a superstar. Edwin Diaz is a superstar right now. Cano was a superstar at one point. So, and if his ETA is five years from now, four years from now, is it really worth 
you know, because I'm looking at it like this. DeGrom, Thor, Steven Matt, Zach Wheeler coming off the best season of his career. We need to win now. Yeah. We need to win now. And last season, I wasn't about that. I wanted to rebuild last season. Um, but but just looking at how dominant DeGrom really is and how 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 if this Mets team got a little bit better at, at hitting the baseball, scoring more runs, how much better of a, of a baseball club we would actually be. So you know what? We need to – we need to make this trade. We need to get this trade done. Yeah. And um, you know what? Cano will probably suck in the last two seasons of his deal, but it's worth it. I mean, if he can give us two eighty five to to three hundred ten, you know, three ten, some some somewhere in that range for the first few seasons of his deal, I think the deal is worth it. <clears throat> you know, Diaz is a top closer, like I said before. But Chris, I wanted to gauge your thoughts on uh, the uh, the reliever free agent market right now because we got guys like. Uh, Odovino from Colorado, Andrew Miller, Britton, uh, Kimbrell. Yeah. I mean, there are so many good relievers out there. I keep seeing a lot of people saying, oh, the Mets should just buy a, a, you know, a reliever instead of giving away prospects for one. I'm under the mindset of let's give away the prospects and sign Andrew Miller. And, like, let's and, and, re- and really solidify that bullpen. Yeah, uh, to- Tony Bro asked a question. Now, I'm, I, he asked about Syndergaard for uh, Nolan Arenado. I don't think that trade would ever happen. I don't see the Rockies traded Arenado. I know that I've actually read that as a rumor. But Syndergaard, to me, Syndergaard at this point, the only sense it would have made to trade Syndergaard was if you're selling. This trade, to me, signifies that the Mets are in it. They're going for it. Um, so that doesn't make any sense to me. I will explode at this point if they trade Syndergaard because it makes no sense whatsoever. You just gave up two of your top three or four prospects to acquire Cano and this relief pitcher, Diaz. So you cannot then go and trade Syndergaard. That makes no sense, right? Yeah, no, it, it wouldn't make it wouldn't make any sense because you right now, realistically, <clears throat> you have two aces on your staff, Thor, DeGrom. That's already a luxury that most teams don't have. Then the back end of the rotation, guys like Steven Matz, a guy who has a high ceiling, guys like Zach Wheeler, you know, has a, another high ceiling, all right? So you're looking at the Mets starting rotation, even though we don't have Matt Harvey anymore, it's still a young, promising rotation. That I would say it's it's above average, you know. Right. I love the rotation, and you didn't, you didn't even bring up. Well, you know, I think you did bring up Wheeler. Wheeler last year, <laughs> he was one of the few bright spots of this team. That guy broke out. That guy's become a legitimate number two or three starter. That guy was great last year, Wheeler. Um, I just want to get to the chat a little bit. Jose yeah. Reyes, I love Jose Reyes. Jose Reyes is not the real Jose Reyes. He's actually a big Nick fan. Uh, he's tuned into some of my Knicks streams, and he's a big Met fan, of course. Um, trade for Noah. Yeah, I read that, Jose. And it, uh, it, it, Okay, if they trade Noah for a guy like Arenado, it makes sense. But if they trade Noah for prospects, that makes no sense whatsoever. I'm sorry. I will explode if that happens. Um, Nathan, yeah, I've I would seen, not do that. I've seen Nathan Hill write this a few times, so I want to address it. Um, yes, do- Doggy, I agree with that. I think the, the close is the big piece of this trade. I'm a White Sox fan, and we got set up for Diaz last year. He's really good, and we paid not a very, not. Very good catch. I think it's a steal, Nathan Hill said. I hope you're right. I mean, Diaz is a stud. Diaz, yeah, yeah Diaz is a stud. He's one of the top four or five closers in baseball, and the Mets are going to have him for the next four years at an affordable rate. So that is a that is the big part of this trade. Cano, of course, is going to solidify the lineup. Now, when you look at about when when Cespedes is due back, July. Yeah. So you're looking at Cano. Wait, maybe. June or July. So but when he comes back, you hope he's full strength. I still think they're going to sign one more bat. I don't know where it's going to be. It might be a third base. It might be a catcher. It might be in the outfield. Yeah. Um, which kind of let, like, I was thinking about it as you were talking. I was, as I was going kind of going through the chat, you know, I saw uh, Johnny say Bryce Harper to the Mets, question mark. I saw, um, uh, who was it? I saw, um, I saw somebody said that the Mets need a catcher desperately, but, you know, cr- Completely, completely agree. Travis Darno is not getting the job done. Kevin Plawicki not getting the job done. I think we need a major league catcher. And I, look, I'm one of the mindset of if if our catcher bats 200 but provides us with above average defense, I'm completely fine with that. Yep, yep. I've seen so I've seen people steal on Darno time and time and time again, and I'm sick of it. I want a catcher that has a gu- that has a cannon for an arm. Yeah, we need to get we need to throw uh, base runners. We just need to. Yeah, I mean, they- I, Nate, uh, uh, LA Yankee King, who's obviously a Yankee YouTuber, good guy. I talk to him on Twitter from time to time. Says, would you trade for Salvador Perez? I actually wanted Perez last year, uh, early in the season. 
And I think he is probably gettable because Kansas City's not a good baseball team. If I'm K- what for us, 28 years old? If I'm KC, I'm looking to get rid of him if I can. So that is a guy that I would actually look at to potentially trade for. I don't know what his price would be, but that guy is probably the best defensive catcher in baseball, and he brings a stick. So I would love to acquire Salvador Perez. I don't know if it's feasible, but I would love to get a guy like that. Yeah, and the Nationals, they just uh, they just traded for Jan Gomes yesterday, and that was a guy that the Mets were going to be targeting. But, um, you know, looking across this, looking across the uh, the landscape of the Mets lineup, I mean, who who would you tr- realistically try to target? Because we're not going to be getting Machado. Yeah, I, I mean, if, I, you, if, if you're not getting Machado and you're not getting um, you're not getting Bryce Harper, the guy that I'm looking at there is uh, I, I love Pollock. I love AJ Pollock. I think I, I I and he's a free agent. He solidifies the lineup because you put him at the top of the order, and he's a well-rounded player. Now, some of his power numbers might be misconstrued because he does play in Arizona with the thin air, right? So yep. so there's a lot of home runs that are hit there. But even if he hits 10 to 12 home runs, steals me 15 bases, 20 bases, plays good defense, you put him at the top of the order, I like Pollock. I think he'd be a good good fit for the Mets. Yeah, didn't Pollock bat like over 300 like two years ago? Yeah, he's a well-rounded player. He, he's always going to hit about 280. He's going to hit you 10 to 20 home runs. He's going to steal you 10 to 20 bases and play good defense. What about Billy Hamilton? Do you like Billy Hamilton? Because I love players like that that provide great defense that can steal, that can lay down bunts and just book it to first base. I love players like that. And the Reds, I believe, non-tendered him yesterday. Billy Hamilton is interesting. Because I, I, I don't think... And a quick question from Jay Dog. Where do you think Machado will go? I'll let you answer that. Where do you, and then we'll get into Billy Hamilton. Ah, where I think Machado will go? I would hope... Machado's one of my favorite players. He's actually from South Florida. I have a buddy that's like pretty good friends with him. Um, so I've known about Machado for re- since like since like the early days. But Machado, I'm gonna say he goes to the Atlanta Braves. Interesting. Well, I hope not. <laughs> Braves or Phillies? Yeah, but uh, yeah, both in the division. I hope not. But uh, as far as Billy Hamilton goes, I love what he brings in terms of speed, and he's a pretty good. He's a good defensive player. Um, what I don't like for Billy Ham, I don't feel like he's an everyday player, but I could be wrong, um, because he, I mean, I, I don't have Hamilton stats in front of me, but off the top of my head, I don't think the guy walks a lot, right? No. Yeah. So his, his, his main attribute is his stolen bases. I would love to have a guy like that. It would depend on how much he would cost. But, but Chris, we have nobody on this team that can steal bases. Not one. No, I like Billy Hamilton. I would take him. I just don't know if he's an everyday player. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, yeah, Jamie uh, 8800 says, if I was the Mets, I wouldn't sign Hamilton. He's good, but he's not the bat we need. I think you're signing Hamilton more for the speed because, I mean, who is our best base? I mean, Jose Reyes last season, and he's, like, old as hell. He's not even on the team anymore. You know, he was, like, our, our biggest threat to steal bases. Um, I, I think that's just an area where the, the Mets have lacked because all, all of our players are extremely old. They're all power hitters. Well, like last season, right? Like yeah. Batista, Gonzalez, and Frazier. All these guys, they're just like home runs or doubles or nothing, you know? And well, say, maybe, say, maybe it's just because it's not my type of baseball that I want like a guy in Billy Hamilton, and I'm super pumped up for Diaz because like closer is my favorite position. But um, bottom line – is I think I would I would take a uh, I would I would take a flyer on Hamilton. Yeah, C- yeah. C- Cano to me, I, I, not Cano rather, uh, Sandy Alderson rather. I'm thinking the trade. Sandy Alderson screwed up this team with his philosophy. He is so committed to analytics, and he just got rid of. He he doesn't think outside the box. To me, to have a successful lineup, you need a little bit of everything. You need hitters like Daniel Murphy, guys that aren't analytics guys, guys that don't don't walk a lot. But put the ball in play. They make productive outs. And what Sandy did was he got a bunch of home runner strikeout hitters. And it, it, the lineup was station to station. They didn't go first to third. They didn't steal bases. They didn't make productive outs. And they need to get back to that. I agree with that. So I, that's why I like this Cano trade. Cano's kind, in a way a little similar to Murphy in the sense that he's not one of these guys. He's looking to swing the bat. He's going up there. He's looking to put the ball in play. So that's why I like the Cano trade. And I would love to have a guy like Billy Hamilton. I, I would. AJ Pollock's another guy I would like. I I want I want some creativity to this lineup. Yeah, I mean Sandy Aller, Sandy Allerson like was under the illusion that he played in like the AL East, where every stadium is extremely small. You know, you look at the Orioles, the Red Sox, the Yankees, Blue Jays. They all play 
even the Rays for that matter, they all try to have that 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 style of play, where, right, where they just hit home runs and that's kind of it. Um, but the problem is, is like in the NL, I don't think it's sustainable. You know, you can't go, you can't get 15 runs in game one and then like go zero, you know, have no runs, one run, zero, two, then 11 on game five or whatever it is. I just don't like that style of play. Right. I just want to get to the chat a little bit. Got a bunch of questions here. So is McNeil going to start over Todd Frazier at third? Um, I I would. I would. We'll see. I like McNeil. He's a throwback. I want to just get the, <laughs> got a bunch of questions. Your take on non-tendering Wilmer Flores, I think it was a good decision because he was due to make... I, I was shocked that they brought back Darno, But uh, I love Flores, but they could use that $5.5 million better somewhere else. Uh, Nelson, what's going on, man? Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to let you answer that in a, a second. I just want to see if there's any other questions. Yes, exactly, uh, A. Woods. That is the key to this trade. If they don't make any more big moves, it was a bad trade. They have to follow that up, right, JC? They have to spend now in free agency. The minute that this move gets done, the New York Mets pushed all their chips into the middle of the table for this season. They committed to it. They cannot back out and, and say, we're done. You know, we, They have to go out and get more relievers. They have to go out and get at least one more bat. You know, but... To answer uh, the question that was, uh, you know, brought up before about Todd Frazier and McNeil, what about putting McNeil at third and putting Todd Frazier at first and having a platoon? Well, but but um, I, I like Alonzo though. I like the kid Peter Alonzo at first. Yeah, but is is Alonzo say if Alonzo has a bad spring? Yeah. The, okay. And, then then yes, that makes sense. Then yes. Uh, real quick, I yeah. just want to see if there's any more questions. I like to answer you guys as much as I can. Uh, Troy Flett says. They should try and push the Mariners to bring in Malik Smith. Uh, Malik Smith's another guy. I don't know how he's done. I remember when he came up with the Braves, and he had a. T- he's another speed guy, right? Um, so he was a highly touted prospect. Maybe. Um, bu- 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 let's see here. Could the Mets contend? Trending topic says. Uh, JC, I think they can. I think they can contend. What's your thoughts on that? Of course, they got. They, they got to stay healthy. Considering that this move goes through. Um... And the pitching staff stays healthy. <clears throat> Looking at the division, I think I think this division's wide open because I look at the Washington Nationals and they have good good pieces in place, right? They got you know they, they got the young shortstop, the the speeding uh, or the uh, who Trey Turner is who I'm thinking about. They have him; he's really fast player, really aggressive. They also have Rendon, who's a very nice player. They have pieces in place. Washington, they're going to be a favorite to win the division. Atlanta, I mean, they won the division last season. What a story they are. Uh, I don't like the Braves at all. Actually, you know, being a Met fan, I, I hope they lose every game. But calling like I see it, I think it's going to be a hot destination for free agents. And I, I feel as though they're almost kind of like turning into like it, – it's like the start of like the St. Louis Cardinals or like, you know, the San Antonio Spurs or the New England Patriots, right, where they're just – they have an amazing farm system and they have an amazing major league team as well. Marlins, I don't think will contend, and then the Phillies are kind of, um, you know, if they continue to write, you know, go in the right direction, I think, I think um, the Phillies will be right there in the thick of it, right to the end of, uh, right to the end of the uh, the tail end of the season. But looking at the division, it's going to be a fun year because I feel like all four teams outside of Miami are like neck and neck. Yeah, I'll tell you, if the Mets could stay healthy and this trade goes through and you bring in another piece, they got to bring in two or three more pieces. You have to add another piece to that bullpen. You have to add one more bat for sure, and I would like a catcher. I would like a catcher that could defend. Um, if they could do some of those things and then maybe make an acquisition at the deadline, maybe you add another arm in the pen, maybe you add another starting pitcher, whatever it is, then, you, then you're cooking with something. So it's all about health. They have to stay healthy. Um, but, 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 let's see. Yeah, Nate, yeah Nathan, uh, Nathan Hill in the chat, he's always in all these, uh, all these chats. He's a great guy. He says, remember... Josh Donaldson, he signed a one-year deal with the Braves. I completely forgot about that. I forgot about that. So Donaldson's a guy who's one of my favorite players, by the way. Um, that's an interesting pickup. Really interesting pickup for yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. A. Wood says he'd like David Robertson. That's not a, He's a beast, man. Yeah. I like it. He's a little old, but he used – I mean, when he was uh, – before he went to the White Sox, man, he was a he was a tank in the back of the uh, back of the pan. Yeah, he was. Uh, he started with the Yankees. He came back to the Yankees, right? He started with the Yankees, and then he came. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah he's always been one of the best relievers in baseball. I mean, yeah, for the right price, why not? Uh, let's see. We traded Jan Gomes to the to the Nats. 
Yeah, I, I saw that the Mets were trying to get Jan Gomes, and I wasn't a fan of that. Uh, because the guy, I don't know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, they didn't give up much though, the Nationals, so, but I feel like if the Mets made that trade, they would have, because the Mets always get fleeced in trades, <laughs> but I, I, I wasn't, I, I, I would much prefer a guy like Salvador Perez, I don't know if he's available, but. Yeah, you know, I mean, we just need to look at defensive, defensive metrics, right, for the Mets, I mean, that's just my belief, um. You know, I know I touched on it earlier. We've just been getting killed too long on defense. Yeah. I feel like that's just hurt us so many. Because also it messes with the pitcher's psyche. You know, when you get a man on first, like as soon as you give up a single, if you're Thor, if you're DeGrom, more so Mats or Wheeler, you know, two guys that don't really have put away stuff. But the minute you give up a single, it's already in the back of your head. Darno, Plawicki, whoever it is, will not be able, will not throw this guy out. Right. Won't throw him out. So there's a chance that every single, every whatever it is, infield single error automatically right off the bat becomes a double. And that is not a good thing to have in the back of your head when you're, you know, uh, you should be throw, focusing on the strike zone. Yeah, well, that, that 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 we remember in the 2015 World Series, that was a huge thing. Every time Kansas City got on base, you thought they were stealing second. And, yep. and, and especially when you pair that with Syndergaard, um, Syndergaard's not good at holding on runners. So when you have Syndergaard on the hill... With a guy like Darno, it's almost guaranteed they're getting the second base. So yeah. th that's a huge thing that that uh, that's killed the Mets for years. Um, Giants first Bears, real quick trending. I'm I'm gonna be doing the stream tomorrow, guys. This is a Mets stream, but real quick, uh, I think it'll be a close game, and I think JC does too. I think the Giants keep it close, and uh, but I think the Bears will come out on top. Uh, I think the Giants will actually win that game because uh, what's his name starting at quarterback? Chase Daniel. You're picking the Giants tomorrow. I like the Giants plus the plus three and a half. All right, but I went out right. Yeah. All right, I like that. I like that. Um, what do you think about Eloy Jimenez? Uh, Nathan Hill asks. Isn't that the prospect? I think he's on the White. I think he's a White Sox outfielder prospect. Yeah. Um, yes, he is. Yes, he is. I like him. I like him because I see. I like five tool players, and I think Jimenez, Jimenez might be one of those guys. I don't think he could be like a Mike Trout. But I think he could almost be like a poor man's Mike Trout. So the White Sox right now. I mean, Nathan, are you a? Uh, are, are you? I'm assuming he's probably a White Sox fan. But uh, Yoan Moncada is an absolute beast. I love Moncada. He and was I love he was disappointing though. I know he's young still. Yeah, he's yeah, but he's it's only year one. You know, I, I still think Moncada is going to be a beast. Um, you know, I I say with football all the time, not everybody's Andrew Luck. Not everybody's Bryce Harper. Not everybody's Mike Trout. Where they just come in and just let, uh, where they're just an automatic stud. I mean, look at uh, look at uh, Max Scherzer. I mean, he was with the Diamondbacks. Nobody even knows he was with the Diamondbacks because like he he was just like a you know middle of the road rotation guy. Yeah. Gets straight to the Tigers and just becomes a beast, right? He went from Diamondbacks to Tigers, correct? Yes. Yes. Diamondbacks, Tigers, Nationals. He was only I think I could have swore there was a fourteen, but whatever. Well, I know, I know he. I definitely know he started with the Diamondbacks. I remember that, and I know he, I'm pretty sure he went to the Tigers after that. Uh, and Scherzer was actually pretty good on the Diamondbacks. He he wasn't what he is now, but he showed spurts because he threw, he always had the triple digit speed there. Um, Moncana was disappointing with the bat. Yes. Um, would you trade Needle for per Needle Plus for Perez? Yes, in a second. In a second. Yeah, I would. Um, got to go, David Wright last game. That's awesome, uh, Awoods. I, nice. I, I wish I got to go to that. Real quick, I'll do my uh, I'll do my story of how I became a Mets fan. Actually, when I was growing up, I was I, I, I baseball was my best sport when I was a kid. When I played, I was I was a very good baseball player, um, but I was never super into watching it. And then right 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 when I was around eleven or twelve, I went to the Subway Series game, and I think it was ninety eight uh, between Stone Cold. I remember threw out the first pitch actually. Between the Mets and the Yankees, and it was back and forth the whole game. Classic game. Um, I think the Yankees had five home runs. Every inning, the Mets took the lead. The Yankees took the lead. Mets took the lead. And that year, of all years, Mariano Rivera was unbelievable. I think he hadn't blown a save in over a year. The Yankees had, I think, a 7-6 lead going into the ninth, bottom of the ninth. And um, Mets got some you know runners in scoring position, whatever it was. Two outs. Matt Franco came up, who back then was the Mets' best pinch hitter. And he gets a single of Mariano between first and second, and the Mets score two runs, and that was that's still to this day the best Mets game I've ever been to, um, and that's what made me a diehard Mets fan. I've been watching them every day ever since. 
That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. I mean, my uh, <clears throat> my story about of me becoming a Met fan is a you know a lot less climatic than yours. I I would just remember waking up because I've loved football my whole life. Um, but the thing is, when I was a little kid, I didn't like the off season was just so boring because expect, that was before like Twitter. And plus, I was a little you know I was a young kid, so I wasn't like up on all the rumors. So I would like le- like legit just wait until the news would break. And I remember just waiting for the school bus in the morning and because um, the school bus was like right across the street. I would just watch the uh, the Sports Center highlights of Jose Reyes just knocking his, knocking in singles and uh, flying around the base path. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get into baseball. I'm going to pick a team. And every morning when I woke up, it was just the Mets. And it was when the uh, – it was when the Mets were just doing really well. Not like, you know, winning a bunch of games, but Reyes was having a really nice season. I'm like, who is this guy? You oh, know. that's that's the year he won the batting title, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and I'm just, I, I just fell in love with Reyes. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to buy the game. I'm going to buy the video game. I'm going to learn all these players, and I'm going to become a Met fan. And um, then, you know, I, I just started kind of falling in love with the, with the sport and, you know, pitching specifically and, and all that stuff. Funny story, my dad... And uh, his his friend um, at the time went to the uh, '86 World Series, and I got the the '86 ticket stub of um, when the ball went under uh, Buckner's leg right over there. I could actually grab it for you guys if you want. <laughs> wait, you got wait what? Say that again. I got, yeah, I got the ticket stub for uh, the 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 game where the ball went under Buckner's leg. Oh, okay. You what, your dad was at the game. Yeah, yeah. That's funny because so was my dad. No way, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad was at the game too. Um, yeah, it's awesome. But um, that. Y- I'll tell you, Jose Reyes to me, and Woodshed said, what's going on, Woodshed, by the way? I love Woodshed. Um, Jose Reyes to me is one of the best Mets ever. I mean, that guy, when he first came up, unbelievable. I've never seen a player like him. I've never seen a player like him. And that 06 team, before you became a Met fan, I guess, that 06 lineup, the best Met, the two best Met lineups I've ever seen were the 99 Mets and the 06 Mets. The 06 Mets, you had Jose Reyes. Paul Aduca had an unbelievable year in the two spot. You had um, Beltron, you had Delgado, you had Wright. <laughs> that three, four, five was unbelievable. Um, I'm trying to think who else they had on that team. Andy Chavez, of course, was on the team. They had um, Xavier Nady played the first half, had a pretty good year. That whole and uh, who was the second baseman on that team? Jose Valentin had a huge year that year. That team was awesome. And the '99 team is my favorite Met team probably ever. You had. Um, the leadoff hitter was, um, who the hell was the leadoff hitter? Oh, Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson had a great year that year. You had Alfonso, you had Olerud, Piazza, Ventura had an MVP-like year. Um, Daryl Hamilton, uh, just a great team. But I I just always love talking about the old Mets teams. Edgardo Alfonso is actually my favorite Met ever. Unfortunately, you never got to see him play. Yeah. Who's your favorite player in the league right now? Not, you know, whether he's a man or whether he's not a man. Who's your favorite player? And this question's for also everybody in the chat. Uh, oh, Tashim Ahmed. What's going on, man? There's your shout-out. Uh, Benny Agbayani. There you go, meet the Mets. He had the walk-off grand slam there in the playoffs. Oh, no, that was Ventura, but Agbayani also had a walk-off home run. Um, my favorite player in baseball right now. Um, I got to go Mike Trout. I mean, I love that kid. Uh-huh. I know it's cliche, but I watched that guy play. And that guy is so, so, so special. I mean, he's, he's, you gotta appreciate what that guy can do. Yeah, for sure. What about you? Man, my, uh, my favorite player, well, actually, real quick, little, uh, L.I. Yankee King says, would Jock Peterson be a trade target for the Yankees? I think he'd be a great Yankee, to be honest with you. I mean, I think his game is really suited for the Yankee Stadium. I think that he's kind of the odd man out in L.A. I mean, Chris, what are your thoughts on that? I'm sorry, I was reading the chat. Say that one more time. Who? who, who? What? Do you, yeah, what are your thoughts on Jock Peterson being a trade target for the Yankees? I'm not a fan of Jock Peterson. I, I He fit well there, though, with the short porch and everything. Um, yeah. I don't know. Peterson, to me, is one of those players that uh, he's just a, a, not a type of player that I like. He's the type of player that could go two months and not do anything. And then he gives you like a two-week stretch where he's like the best player in baseball. I just, I don't like players like that. That's just me though. Um, yeah. You know. I would say, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. 
No, I was just going to to answer a question. I would probably say my favorite player in the league right now. I know he's young, but I love uh, Shohei Otani. He's so fun oh, to watch. Oh, that's a good one. What a beast. That's a good one. That's a cuz we have he's so unique. Well, you know, he that's a, that's a good one. I do like watching Otani. He's cool cuz he has like that he's he's foreign and he has like a confidence about him that yeah. and like he, he doesn't speak English. So, but it's just weird like the way he moves around, the way he strikes people out and he can hit bombs too. He's just so fun to watch, man. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Jose Altuve is a really good one, too. I see a bunch of people uh, talking about him. Jose Altuve, I love watching that guy, too. What, he's like five foot six, and the guy, the guy is probably the best pure hitter in the game right now. Uh, he's unbelievable. My favorite player of all time since I've been watching, my favorite player of all time that wasn't a Met is Vladimir Guerrero. And I don't know if you got to see him play. Vladimir. No, but... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, Vladimir Guerrero is such a throwback. He went up there without the batting gloves. He swung at everything, but you couldn't strike the guy out. The guy never struck out 100 times in a season. He was like a throwback player. I admired the hell out of him. He had the best arm I've ever seen in the outfield. The guy could throw. He would throw it on a dime to third base from right field. Um, Such a special player. I loved Vladimir Guerrero. Yeah, funny story. It's funny you bring up Vlad. Um, I remember I was dating this girl, and like for our first date, uh, we went to uh, a Saint or like a uh, the the Mets Blue Jays single A, you know, ma- uh, minor league baseball team, and Vlad Guerrero's son was playing in that game, and he at the time he was the uh, the number three prospect in all of baseball, and of course, you know, he went four for four. I think he hit, I think he hit like a home run and then like three doubles. So the guy just balled out. And um, it was just awesome just, like, watching. Because the minor league teams are, like, super cheap to go to. Or or the minor league games are super cheap to go to. So it was just, like, really cool looking at, like, being super close next to, um, you know, a a future star of the league. Yeah, he's still ranked one of the best prospects, isn't he? Uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. I I think legit he's, like, the number one prospect in baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a funny story, actually. I don't know if you knew this. Vladimir Guerrero has a brother, Wilton Guerrero. And Wilton came up first. And he was supposed to be the better of the two. He was like the number one prospect in baseball. He was a second baseman um, for um, the Dodgers. And he came up and everyone was... And no one even talked about Vladimir. Vladimir came up, he wasn't highly touted. And Wilton ended up being out of the league in three years. And Vladimir Guerrero ended up being a Hall of Famer. It's just funny how that works. Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but Chris, man, I gotta get going. I have to go waste away at work on this championship Saturday for all this call all this college football is going on I have to I have to be you know I'm just gonna be stuck at work but I gotta be I gotta be there in 30 minutes so yeah we're just gonna, we're gonna for, by, uh, by the way I just want to give him another quick shout out anybody that has not checked out this guy's channel Jet Central huge football fan extremely knowledgeable um so check out his channel the link is in the description name is Jet Central I'm gonna let him go I'm gonna stay on with you guys for like another 20 minutes because then I got work but uh, J- <laughs> JC, I'm gonna let you go, and then we're gonna I'm gonna talk to the chat. We're gonna talk a little match, whatever. JC, thank you for coming on, my man. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, shout out, Chris, and uh, quick shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, awesome questions. Oh, and, oh uh, by the awesome by stuff. the way, before you go, another yeah. thing I want to announce: JC is gonna be on my channel Sunday night, and we're gonna announce the uh, the Sunday night football game. So that should be a lot of fun. So be sure to check yeah, that look- out. Yeah, looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. Cannot wait for that. I believe it's Chargers Steelers. Uh, in any case, it's going to be sick. going to be a great time. And uh, Chris, I'll catch you later, bro. All right, man. Have a good day. You too. All right, guys. Let me expand my uh, picture real quick, and we will continue to talk. And uh, no, that somebody asked if this is also on JC's channel. It is not. It's only on my channel. But JC is going to be on my channel a lot more going forward. Let me get rid of the display capture here. All right, guys, so Javier Baez, the best defensive player in baseball. I don't – Jackie Bra- – yeah, of course I watched Jackie Bradley Jr., uh, a one giant rebuttal. What's going on, brother? Um, bu- 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 George Alabama today is going to be a great game, Buffalo. Uh, but, yeah, guys, I'll just talk to you guys now. He's off. I- I- I'll talk anything. You want to talk Mets, Giants, Knicks, whatever, I'll talk it. What do you think of Alonzo for Madsen, Bunga? Is Bumgarner even on the trade trade market, though? I mean, why would you ever trade that guy? We got to win tomorrow. We got to win tomorrow. Uh, like, my, I never root for my team to lose. I want to get a win. But, uh, you know, I, I'd like to hear some of your guys' stories about the Mets. How did you got if you're Mets fans, how did you become Mets fans? Or just, how did you become fans of whatever teams you root for? 
Tony Brock, great question. Who's taking it? I, I mean, I, I'm excited to see Alonzo. Alonzo killed it last year in AAA, and I thought the Mets should have called him up um, last year. It, much, you know, they should have called him up in, like, August, July. Um, so I'm excited to see him. Um, I'm trying to think who else could take a big step. Hmm, that's a good question. I'd have to think about that. Mats to me is too up and down. I don't trust Mats. I the one guy I'm looking at is Alonzo right now. Yes, exactly, Jose Reyes. A lot more. Steven Pazienza, you don't like uh to me it's more about Diaz the closer. And get and we're also getting rid of bad contracts. The one thing I don't like is the prospects we're giving up. We're giving up two of our top three or four prospects on the team. So that scares me a little bit. But I think Cano's still got two or three years in him. And the is one of the best, might be the best closer in baseball. And you're getting him at an affordable rate. So I don't know if I love the trade, but I don't hate it. I know a lot of Mets fans hate it. I don't hate it. Yes. Oh, great call there, Tony. It's uh, slipping my mind. Yes. Uh, he, he had a good second half. So hopefully he can build off of that. Good, great, great, great point there. Uh, Yankee King, I agree with that. I think he's better suited for the bullpen because you see it every time Matt starts. He gives you three or four good innings and then he falls apart. There you go, meet the Mets. <laughs> I was born in 85, so right around the same time. Became a Yankees fan because they have so much power. Yeah, I mean, they, I'm not gonna lie, they're a fun team to watch. Yeah, Tam, I think he can. Rosario, yeah, Rosario, he is the breakout candidate. I, I slipped my mind, but yes, Rosario is the breakout candidate. I became a Met fan watching them on TV over the Yanks. I hated the Yankees, and a week later, Piazza was. We so Jose, we became a Met fan right around the same time. If they, if they trade... They can't trade Thor, BK. They can't trade Thor. I would be so upset. Diehard Yankee fan from a family of diehard Red Sox fans. That made me a Giants fan. Very cool. Very cool. That must be uh, fun at family dinners. <laughs> Barkley versus Mac. Who will win this battle? I... You want me to be honest, Nelson? I, I think Barkley's going to have a tough time tomorrow. I, I think that defense is tough. They, it's going to be tough for him to run the football. Oh, that's awesome, Nathan. Paul Canerco, if you look at his numbers, Paul Canerco's a borderline Hall of Famer. A lot of people don't realize that. When the Yankees say, yeah, Reggie, I mean, Mr. October, Tam. Derek Jeter, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are Yankee fans because of Derek Jeter. No doubt about it. First game was in 93. I think my first game was in 91. I remember it briefly as a kid. Eddie Murray was on the team. Bobby Bonilla. Ray Ordonia, Steve. Ray Ordonia is probably the most, spe the spe most special shortstop I've ever seen. Some of the plays that guy has made. Uh, and I'm going to get into one play in a second, but I just want to read this chat. I hope Barkley runs for 300, Buffalo. Um, bu 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 bu. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but, Steve, there's one play in particular with Ray Ordonez. I remember watching, I think it was the 99 or 2000 season. There was a slow roller hit to second base to Edgardo Alfonso. Ray Ordonez goes from the shortstop hole, runs across the diamond to second base, dives, does a somersault, gets on his feet and threw the guy out at first. It is single-handedly the greatest play to this day I've ever seen a shortstop make. And if you haven't seen it, you have to YouTube it. That guy was a magician. That guy was incredible with the glove, Ray Ordonez. Uh, Tony, I, I'm worried that they're going to stick with what they got. They just tendered Darno. And, of course, they still have Pulecki. So I hope they don't, but I'm worried they're gonna. Yeah, Steve, that play was ridiculous. Um, Jamie, I hope so. Although I will say this. I think Harper, as great as he is, 
And I, of course, I'm going to be thrilled if the Mets get him. But I don't think Harper's worth the money that he's going to get paid. This guy is very inconsistent. He's only had two good years, one, two great years. But the guy, the guy has had a lot of bad years. He's not, he's not like a Mike Trout. Anybody that compares him to Mike Trout is insane. You are Jeter's final game. That must have been special, BK. That must have been special. Um, but yeah, guys, I'll hang out for about another 10 minutes. Thank you guys for tuning in the stream. I'm going to try to do this more often. Try to do Mets stuff as the season gets into it. Jamie, he's never hit. Off the top of my head, I don't think he's ever hit 40 home runs. Maybe once. And he's only driven 100 RBIs once. I know that. Maybe twice. But I think it's only once. And he's very injury prone, Nathan. Oh, God. Ray Ardonia's meet the Mets. So, so. That infield. That infield the Mets had in 99. Probably the greatest defensive infield in the history of baseball. It was that good. Robin Ventura was as good as they come at third. Olerud, of course, was fantastic at first. Ordonez and Alfonso. They had four guys that couldn't want to go glove that year in their infield. It was ridiculous. McCray, Husky, Gilkey, yeah. <laughs> Gilkey, remember Gilkey was in uh, Men in Black. He was in that movie Men in Black. Oh, Kaz Matsui, ugh. He probably would, Buffalo, hit 60. That's how he became, uh... Oh, okay, you're just talking about a story with the Mets. Uh, Daryl Strawberry against the Expos. My favorite, I've been, I've actually been, that's a good question, Steve. I've been to, I want to say 11 baseball stadiums. I, I'm going to go down the list. I've been to Mets, I've been to Yankees, I've been to Fenway, I've been to Wrigley, I've been to Camden Yards, I've been to Tampa Bay, which is the worst stadium I've been to. I've been to Coors Field, I've been to Phillies, I've been to San Francisco, which is a beautiful stadium. Um, I've been to the Angels, and I think there's one more, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But my favorite stadium I've been to has got to be the Fenway or Wrigley. I mean, those two. When you walk into those stadiums, it's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It really is, it, it, because you just appreciate it. You you just breathe baseball when you walk into those stadiums. And I'll tell you, um, Wrigley, uh, Coors Field, if you haven't been there, is a beautiful stadium. Coors Field is beautiful. Never been to that one, trending. Never been to that one. Oh, the other stadium I went to was... Is, wait, is Great American the Brave Stadium? I went to the new Brave Stadium, which is very nice. It's that, it is actually very much like City Field. It was the same architect. I went to that last year. That was my 11th stadium. Camden Yards is beautiful, too. Nathan Hill is the worst. It's the worst. I can't, I, that's what one I got to get to, Yankee King. I got to get to PNC Park. Got to get there. The stadium looks unbelievable. I'd be happy with Ramos or Grandal. Uh, and, I, and I want Miller. He's on my list. I want Miller and Pollock. I'm all in on. Fenway's fantastic, Steve. It's, it's unbelievable. Even if you're a Yankee fan, you got to appreciate it. Great. Okay, yeah. I, I, I That's one I got to get to, Trending Topics. Oh, yeah, Todd. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. You know I always appreciate when you guys come in. I have a lot of fun with you guys uh, in the stream. Last week was unbelievable. You guys rocked the house. It was fun. Um, and I can't, I'm going to do two. I'm going to do the Sunday night game this week, too, with JC. So that should be a lot of fun as well. But, yeah, hopefully we have a good game on Sunday. Yeah, J yes, he does get hurt a lot, Jamie. No, I wasn't, PK. I think they should have. I think they should have. That's... And I, I said this on, on the stream last night with Rover on, on uh, Insomnia Sports, which if you haven't checked it out, please do. That's our joint channel. Um, Kareem Hunt, this guy, this guy, he's replaceable. You look at Andy Reid over the course of history. He makes running backs. He does. Jamal Charles, LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy goes down. They bring in Bryce Brown, which Meet the Mets told me last night his name. I forgot it. He has a great, great three-game stretch. Uh, Spencer Ware, when he came in when Jamal Charles got hurt a few years ago, was great. I, I am fully convinced Spencer Ware is going to come in and do great for that Chiefs team. Because Andy Reid is a tremendous offensive mind. I don't think they're going to miss a beat. 
Oh, yeah, Nathan knows. Coors Field is fantastic. Uh, Metstream, Jose, I'm going to try to do this once a week going forward. I'm going to try to do it once a week. Uh, yeah, Nelson, Notre Dame's my college team. I'm rooting for them to win it this year. I don't think they will. Oh, yeah, Matthew. I mean, one, one thing I want to do, Matthew, next time I go to Fenway, I want to sit on top of the Green Monster. I want to get that vantage point. It's great. I want to get that vantage point. Nathan, hopefully you can pick up Ware. Because I think Ware's going to be fine if he's available. Yeah, guys, please hit that like button. It does help the channel. Hit the like button. And please subscribe if you haven't done so. And don't forget to ring the bell to get notifications. Kyle Fuller versus Odell. Ooh, I'm going to go Odell in that matchup. I'm going to go Odell in that matchup. I think Odell could have a decent day tomorrow. Because I think they're going to force the Giants to pass. I'm worried Eli's going to throw two or three picks, though. I really am. 72 hours. Yeah, I, I think it's a done deal, Jamie. I think it's just a matter of the, the, the money. That's what they, they, they're working out all the details. But I think Cano, um, I think Cano's going to be a Met. It's that, not that. <laughs> you got it, Steve, man. Thank you for tuning in, Steve. Um, and I look forward to talking to you, hopefully, on Football Sunday. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to turn off and probably, probably another 10, I'm going to go 10 more minutes, maybe 5, 10 more minutes. Spence going to terrorize Amuka Moore, we'll see, we'll see, I hope so, well, I hope so, um, I'm worried about this, this Bears defense though. Three sacks, Nathan Hill says, oh, I could see that, especially against this Giants offensive line. I could see that. But, um, real quick, I'm excited to see how this Mets offseason plays out. I really am. I think it's going to be one of the more entertaining Mets offseasons we had in a while. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, BK, I, got, I, got, I work Saturdays. Yeah, hopefully they eat. 50 million would be nice, Jose. Hasta luego, Tam. Thank you for tuning in, my man. Yankee King, thank you for tuning in, my man. Matt going to kill Eli and Kyle. And Kyle. So, Ligma, you think Kyle's going to come into the game tomorrow? I could see it. I could see the Giants getting blown out. You put lead in. I could see it. Jamie, I hope so. I hope so. The one problem with the Mets is, what the Mets always do, is they give you two years. They give you two great years, and then they go dormant for 15 or 10. We need sustained success. We need to get a guy in here that's going to give us five, six, seven-year stretches where we can compete. Because you look at it, 99 and 2000, the Mets competed. After that, they didn't. Uh, 06, 07, 08, even though they didn't make the playoffs, they were good. After that, they didn't compete. They gave us one year in 15. They snuck into the playoffs with a hot stretch in 16. But the last two years, they haven't competed. We need to be good for five, six, seven years straight. And we haven't been able to do that really since the existence of the franchise, definitely since I've been watching. Akeem Hicks, he's great. Troy Fletch says, do you think the Knicks should trade Frank Nielakina? No. And I'm not a huge Frank fan. But my philosophy, Troy, is you don't trade a player when his value is at his lowest point. Right now, you're not going to get much for Nielakina, in my opinion. I mean, if you can get a, a mid to high first round pick for him, yeah, I'd trade him. But I don't think you're going to get that. I'd love Harper, J Jamie. I'd love... I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I don't want Bryce Harper as a Mets fan. But I think he's going to be overpaid and I don't think he's going to be worth the contract. I think he's inconsistent. I think he's an overrated baseball player, to be honest. What's going on, Mitch the God Trubisky? I'm looking forward to the stream tomorrow, my man. Um, no, the Giants... The, because of the Giants' weapons, they, could always, they, they always have a chance. Beckham and Barkley could break open a game. So they are a dangerous team to play. But I'm worried about your team tomorrow. Your defense is out of this world. Was that this year though? Well, ho BK Sports Talk, thank you so much for the super chat, my man. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat what you just said though. Because I don't agree with it. I think he's hated. and uh, <laughs> But thank you for the super chat. Um... 
I love Eli. I'm going to go to the grave loving Eli. Um, but that, you know. Was that this year that trade off for Jose? Oh, in a second, Troy. In a second. I, do, I trade him for Mikel Bridges or Josh Jackson. In a second. I Goodbye. I know a lot of people love Neil Keeney. They don't like hearing that. But goodbye. Uh, I don't think they'd get that, though. Nathan Hill, I'm, I'm hoping the Knicks get one of those two guys. R.J. Barrett or Zion Williamson. I don't know which one I like more. Um, but I, I love both those guys. And th again, thank you so much for the Super Chat, PK. By the way, anybody that hasn't checked it out, he's a new YouTuber. He's trying to grow. Check his channel out. He does a little bit of everything. He does the Spurs, the Eagles, the uh, Yankees, and um, and uh, I forget the other team. Uh, Rangers. The only thing I don't like about uh, Wall, Jose, one giant rebuttal. Thank you. <laughs> Another new YouTuber, one giant rebuttal. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, and he says we could debate this anytime. Um, he has a really cool channel, actually. It's new. He's only got like eight subscribers. But it's actually a fun channel to watch. What he does on his channel is he goes on other giant YouTubers' channels and he basically debates what they said. You know, he like gives his opinion, what he disagrees with. It's actually a pretty fun channel, so check it out. Uh, Matthew, do I watch hockey? I do in the playoffs. And I love going to hockey games. But I'm not big. Um, I'm not big on um, watching it on TV. I can't get into it. Plus, I'm a huge basketball fan, so it's hard for me to watch hockey when it's in basketball season. I also love college basketball. I watch basketball nonstop after football season. I watch the Knicks. I watch St. John's. St. John's off to a six and zero start, by the way. So they're off to a fun season. Uh. Jimmy G is overrated. He's a little overrated. He's a little overrated. I, I didn't agree with that contract the Niners gave him, to be honest. Eli for MVP or that. <laughs> the one year, and I stand by this, and me and Bad Dog talk about this on our joint channel, which, by the way, if you haven't checked out Bad Dog, please do it. Eli Manning in 11, 2011, should have won the MVP. I stand by that. I don't care what the stats say. That year, he was the MVP of the league. He had eight come from behind victories. Fourth quarter comeback after fourth quarter comeback. That was Eli's by far his best year. Nearly threw for almost 5,000 yards and, of course, capped it off with a Super Bowl. Jamie, you got it, man. Yeah, I'm going to try to do it once a week. Um, maybe not yet because when there's news, I'm going to do Met streams. And in season, I'm doing it once, twice a week. And I'm going to try to announce one or two Met games a week as well. Oh, you're a, you're a Hoosier fan. You're a Hoosier fan. Nathan. Oh, that well, that makes sense. Um, yeah, Indiana's had a nice... They, they've turned that program around. They have. The D, BK, not in 2011. Go back and look at it. The defense was horrible in the regular season. The Giants had one of the worst defenses in football that year, and they had no running attack. Eli carried them that regular season. The playoffs, the, the defense came to life. Ligma, I'll tell you. That Cowboys team, and I didn't call it. I thought the Cowboys would compete. There was a lot of factors in that game that people have to remember. For, for one, it's Thursday night football, okay? Thursday night football this year, the home team, I believe, has only lost once. And the home field traditionally does much better on Thursday night than they do on Sunday. I think it's like an 8 or 10% differential. So that was a huge factor, okay? Two, the Cowboys match up very well with them. They have a great running attack and um, a great defense. So they have the type of team that can slow down the pace of play. And, uh, and and three, the Cowboys were hot coming in. Do I think the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl? No. But I think if they're at home, I think they have a chance to beat New Orleans. But the problem is in the playoffs, they ain't going to New Orleans and winning. They're not winning in that stadium. Yeah, Duke, Duke was... Uh, D Duke this year. Real quick, this Duke basketball team this year... Might be, in my lifetime, the greatest college basketball team I've ever seen in terms of talent. They have the top three picks in next year's draft on their team. Now, of course, the Michigan team, when I was a kid, that team was fantastic with Weber, Jalen Rose, Jawan Howard. Um, that was a stellar team, too. But this team's right there. 
Gotta stick with the orange and blue with the Florida Gators. But, all right, I get it, meet the Mets. <laughs> all day, Jose. All day. Um, you know, when, when the Cano trade is completed, I'm going live. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go live that day, depending on my schedule. A lot of my streams, unfortunately, I'm going to try to do Saturday morning streams, Mets. Because I work at night. So I'm going to try to do Saturday morning streams, Mets, probably going forward. And maybe I'll go live that night when the trade is completed. If it's completed. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm going to go in about two minutes. I got two minutes. Duke is like the... Yeah, they, they are stacked. They, that team... I watched them play the other day. They're stacked. Duke, uh, that Duke team. They're going to be tough to beat this year. They are. They got to be the favorites to go to the, uh, the championship this year. They got to be. But St. John's, I'm telling you. I'm a, they're playing today. Actually, they're tipping off in 10 minutes. St. John's is playing Georgia Tech today. If you get a chance, check them out. They got a player in their team, Shamori Pons. This guy, I think, is being overlooked. Shamori Pons, I think he's going to be an impact player at the pro level. Right now, NBA uh, NBADraft.net has him projected around the 40th, mid-second round pick. I like Shamori Pons. I think this kid has potential to be a starting point guard at the NBA level. So if you get a chance to check out St. John's today, check them out against Georgia Tech. Uh, Ligma, I agree. I think they get out of the wild card round. I think they get knocked out in the second round. Yeah, Troy, so you watch St. John's too. Yeah, I, I like Shamori Pons. I like him a lot. But uh, guys, I'm going to go because I got to get dressed for work. I got to get the Mets shirt off. Uh, get, get in my work uniform, but guys, I had a great time talking to you guys. Um, of course, I'm going to be live for the uh, Giant game tomorrow um, and the Sunday night football game. I'm going to I'm gonna do the Knicks stream on Monday, too. I didn't announce that. I'm going to be doing the Knicks stream on Monday, um, and yeah, and I'm going to be here at least once a week talking Mets. Of course, I'm going to continue my Giant content, and I'm going to try to pick the Knicks content up once football season's over, because it's just way too much work. So, I'm going to be, once football season's over, I'm going to be doing a little more Nick videos. I'm going to continue to announce some Nick games, some Met games. And we're going to get that going. And, of course, NFL draft. But, um, yeah, BK, I do. Uh, yeah, I do. I do think that um, they have a chance. I don't think they're going to do it, though. But they have a chance. <laughs> Jose, I'm not. I promise I won't drink at work. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys were great. You made it fun. And I'm looking forward to talking to you guys uh, hopefully tomorrow at the Giants stream. You guys have a good Saturday, guys.